Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. Sitting me on Twitter, the Gaming Drag. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Far Beyond the World. I've got a little guest with me today. It's my sweet little boy, my sweet kitty cat Oreo, or as I sometimes call him, Ori Ori Ori. <laughs> yeah, he's just over here sitting close to my lap. So he's gonna join us for our little video today. Anyway, guys, please sit back and enjoy for the next 18 minutes of entertaining. Let's jump right in. Alarm Chan, you are up, and let's go. Okay. I still can't believe you. I feigned some offense, giving him a challenging look. Criticizing me for being uppity while you lived in a freaking palace. Lived being the operative sense. He winks and bops his head instinctively towards the main hall. I nod and we proceed to enter. F Finally, I was about to send someone to fetch you. The chief grumbles in annoyance as we enter the great hall. Doesn't he, sweet boy? Yes, he does. He's seated with his he's seated with Vithy, with Vithyr at the top table, looking over a stack of papers. You take an informed guess that those are the letters they were talking about last night. The Howl summons. I'm sorry. I had to find all the travel gear and ensure it's in working order. Renick responds, patting the backpack I'm carrying and drawing an audible oof from me, as I'm reminded of the load. When we come to a stop in front of the table, I take the liberty in dropping the bag onto the ground, and both wolves look at it with a slight bewilderment. Seems a bit much, doesn't it? Why are you taking the tent? They echo my very own concerns for just a few moments ago, and I look to the wolf with a subtle what did I what did I say face? Well, the human is furless and there are still cold nights ahead. Last thing I want is for him to catch something before we even get there. He responds awkwardly, causing the two older wolves to exchange confused glances. Hmm. Thankfully a side door cracking open draws their attention, and I see Trist walk in with a silver pitcher. We exchange cordial gazes and I wink at him as he passes by. Thank you. But you can take it away. We have a long day ahead of us, and we need to maintain clear heads. The old wolf dismisses the bunny, causing Vithir to shudder. Come on! Not even a little drinky? I'm parched here, and I have mass and have a massive headache. He pleads, causing the bunny to stop and observe their ensuing exchange for further instruction. This is a sober job, Vithir. Tell that to Anel. The crazy old minx already drank me under the table. You shouldn't have been drinking last night. The chief sounds unamused, and the, bro and the brown male protests. She doesn't listen! She asks for a drink, and when, once she's done with it, she already forgot she had one. I hope she's fine. She's not 80 anymore. You can't treat her like a drinking buddy. He utters through an exasperated sigh, rubbing the ridge above his eyes. Honestly, you should have seen her in the morning. She got up like nothing happened and went home. Not alone, I hope. Of course not. Who do you think I am? Ithir scoffs in evident offense. I ask her to escort her. Good. You need to be careful with her, is all I'm saying. We can't afford to lose a nail before the howl. Honestly, Varric, I'll take more than a bottle of moonshine to kill her. And I'm not about to chastise a near-century-old female telling her what she can and cannot do. Either way, there will be no drinking. The chief again swishes his hand at Trist, and the bunny turns on his heel in quite a surprise. I guess stuff is really serious if they forgo the booze. But it was amusing listening to Anel's antics. So she's nearly a hundred years old. That is quite impressive. I really cannot help but wonder what she was like in her youth. This seemed to her like a lifetime away. Father, I was wondering if perhaps Trist could aid Orion in procuring one last thing we need for our journey. Renick steps forward, drawing their expectant gazes, and the chief snaps his fingers, causing the bunny to freeze. Oh, and what would that be? He needs something to he needs something to cover his feet with. His underpaws are unnaturally soft and prone to injury. I don't think I follow. The old male narrows his eyes. It's okay, little boy. What you looking at? Hmm, what you my sweet little boy looking at? Oh my goodness, you are so luxuriously fluffy. He is like the fluffiest cat. Oh my god. He's like a royal cat. It's okay, sweet Clearly getting impatient with what he perceives as a silly request. Trust me, it'll make our journey go much smoother. Very well. Yeah, guys, if you don't know, this is the one who bats at my door sometimes in the videos. You can hear him like... Settle back down, dog. The chief sighs and waves, and waves his paw both at me and the bunny, allowing us to disappear into the side room. What was that about? Triss asks with a rather confused expression. Can you arrange for some robust cloth for me, or a thick piece of leather would do? Whatever for? I need to make some, bandage, some bandages to wrap around my feet. Did you cut yourself? No, but I need to protect my souls on the journey. 
Humans usually don't walk around barefoot. I say, realizing how silly it must sound through his widening smirk. That's a bit fruity. He stifles a chuckle, looking at me with pity. The road would be long and most likely covering difficult terrain. My skin bruises easily. Hmm. I'll see what I can find. Would linen be enough? The bunny proposes, and I nod eagerly. It would. Bring anything you've got. Wait here, then. Ugh. He pats my shoulder and leaves through one of the side doors leading deeper into the complex. I hang around the door, listening in on the conversation, but I'm not getting much out of it. The chief and Vithyr simply list the supplies around and cast it secure. Yes, my boy. You are so sweet. God, I wish I could bring you with me to California. God, you're so wonderful. Thankfully, I have some... Thankfully, he's a shared house cat. He's technically not mine, but he loves me all the same. <laughs> yes. Aside from the grains, they also need steel and a lot of it. I'm also relieved to hear them speak of medical supplies, which apparently... With, which apparent lack troubled me deeply after the conversation with Farissa. But before I can full, full on enter my Snoopy mode, I, the brown bunny returns with my query. Here you go. He lays down an assortment of items on the side table. I found some burlap sacks. They're roughly the size of your feet. The bunny hoists them up in the air and closes one eye as, a measure, as, a me, as to measure them against me. I also have some bandages and the leather you asked for. Thanks, Trist. I owe you one. Two, actually. He winks, coolly hinting at my scavenger hunt from yesterday, and I simply nod in agreement. At first, I wasn't sure how to go about this, but eventually I decided to trace the outline of my foot on the leather piece. The bunny observes as I cut out the shape of the knife, careful not to cut myself whenever the blade slips through the slips against the stubborn pelt. Once I have two flappy soles, I, I scooch myself onto the counter and try to affix them to the underside of my feet with tightening, with tight bandaging. In this, I needed some help, and Trist aids me as best he can. It takes a short while, but eventually everything is neatly in place, and I jump off from the table. It feels amazing not having to endure the cold stone underfoot. My beaming expression draws an amused scoff from the bunny. I must admit, this looks rather peculiar. Trist mutters, watching as I put on one of the burlap sacks. It's quite shallow, and the tie handle secure and the tie handle security and the tie handle secure secures it tightly around my ankle, almost looking like an old timey shoe. Well, it's not, the, it's not the comfiest type of footwear, but it does the job. With any luck, I'll find a cobbler and a strand bar, and I'll be able to get myself a proper pair. At the very least, they, would, they must have sandals. I think out loud, causing the bunny to laugh. You say the darndest things. You almost sound like my Nana. Her mind was never quite there, but near the end, she was blabbering nonsense just like you. I'll miss your snarky ass. I smirk at him coyly. I won't miss yours. He teases right back. Your sass with the elders almost beggars belief. Maybe once you're back, I'll finally get to enjoy your execution. Maybe. I wink, restraining myself from returning the joke. Any sort of playful threat of harm would be inappropriate right now towards the bunny. He notices my slight apprehension and waves his paw at me. Don't. He mutters sternly. I don't need your pity. Just keep in mind what we talked about. I nod. I won't. Not after what I heard yesterday. Trish gives me a half smile and sighs. Just don't die out there, you little freak. And deprive and deprive you of a front row seat to watch me draw my final breath? Never. I laugh as he bobs my shoulder encouragingly and decide to return to the main hall. I've been absent long enough. It's amazing how I how used I got to the soft slapping of my feet across the wooden stone. The sound is now replaced with a subtle ruffling of burlap with each of my steps. I look up to the center of the room, drawing immediate attention from the chief and Vithir who look at me with risen brows. Now that is the most unusual thing I've seen the entire year. And that includes Vulgar nearly getting neutered by Verissa. He's going to be a laughing stock. The chief doesn't mirror in his friend's levity and gives me a rather aggravated look. No, sweet boy, you can get down. Come on. There you go. There you go. Sweet boy. I bet where he comes from it's quite normal, otherwise he wouldn't need it. Renick tries to reason on my behalf and Vithyr shrugs. In all honesty, I think we've wasted enough time with that twerp. The chief nods in agreement. You have my letter of recommendation. Here it is, sealed and ready. He passes a sizable envelope to the chief, and the old male nods in satisfaction. Good. Oh, Lord, here we go. Hold it right there! We all jolt up to attention at the now startlingly familiar screeching. Oh, for the love of a Luna! Cute, Varric, real cute! Pudgy female wheezes on her way up toward the table. Did you really think I would miss this? 
Why wasn't I consulted on Rennick's apparent diplomatic mission? I'm seriously considering bringing back the day, the, the day guards at the door. In fact, the day guards at the door, okay. People come in and out of this place as if it were an inn. The chief mutters to Vithyr, paying the old hag no mind. Well? But she would not be ignored, and Vithyr leans to his side, resting against the armrest. Not our fault you stormed off before the meeting ended. Or perhaps you waited for the very last moment to bring the matter up. Really, sending your son to beg and grovel for scraps from your master's table. She takes on a more, you know, more contemptuous tone than usual in the brown male scoffs. Can hardly call it begging if we're paying for it. Say what you will, but we need supplies. I nod internally, watching his Rennick visibly tenses up. He really hates that fat bitch. Well, good reason. Better safe than sorry. That's something you can't quite argue against. And this perfect waste of tribe's gold is being safe? Ha! Huh. First, we need to get the trade rights. Chief shrugs, sorting through the papers in front of him. As it stands, our wolves are not allowed to use Strandbard's market for anything other than personal use. That's where the groveling will come in handy. My, you must really despise your son to submit him to such humiliation. I shudder, hearing a clear growl escape Rannick's throat. The female gives him a cautious look, followed by a few steps away. My son will do what must be done for our people. I think it's past time he, he took on a more he took on a more official role. That is to say, if you hope to retain your seat. She continues her taunting, but her gaze now ventures to me, and I roll my eyes. Why is this naked monkey here? Are you seriously thinking I would let you send him off just like that? Send him off? She blinks in confusion and looks to Vithyr, who only shrugs. Oh, cut the act. I know what you're up to. Getting rid of the evidence just before the howl is exactly the sort of underpawness I would expect of you. He is Rannick's attendant. The old male reiterates calmly. He's just carrying his load. And what is to prevent your son from misplacing the little that little whelp somewhere that to the somewhere that accursed Tiggery town? Tigery. His whim, I suppose. Ithir shrugs indifferently. Rannick seems awfully keen on the bugger. Spare me! You know I will press the issue at the Howl, and having the human disappear would make any attack on your son moot. You two have planned this. Her voice bellows across the marbled hall, as she thumps her fat foot against the door, against the floor. You think your son will take your place, and you want to see your scheming little harlot sit beside him. Not a first time a scheming little harlot would align herself with this chair, is it? With your quips at her through a snarl, and the comment feels somewhat personal, as Aldris just looks at him dumbfounded. I don't think there's anything we could say to convince you otherwise, so I don't see a point in this conversation. The chief spreads his arms in defeat, but Vithyr gazes at her challengingly. Let us assume the worst. What? What are you talking about? She narrows her brows, the fat of her face squinting her eyes so much that she might, have, might as well have closed them. Let us assume Rannick will misplace, as you so nicely put it. The human in, the human in Strandbard. What of it? You have witnesses to confirm he was here. No one is going to deny his actual existence. His whereabouts are of no relevance to this case, are they? Brownmouth states in Val, I mean Aldris, clearly struggles with the proposition. Damn it, and hell would and hell even made me do it. I well, he must She stumped she stumped, and her argument proved flawed. There would have to be a cross examination. Cross examination? The chief scoffs in amusement. He's a daft mute. Can't even speak a damn word. Might as well question trees. Arrgh! And what about his debt, then? She spats angrily, looking to me with determination. His debt has to be paid off. Very well. What is it worth? What? The pudgy female blinks in confusion, taken aback by the question. The two weeks he's been here, what is it worth to you? What sort of trickery is this? We're playing ball. Vithyr shrugs yet again. It's clear they're done with her. I clearly have more important things to do right now than quibble with you over some petty nonsense. Everyone lost their moon damn mind the moment this ape lost in our village. That includes you. I... I smile, seeing her at a loss of words. It's clear it's not a sensation she's familiar with, as she quickly switches to anger and waves her finger at them as if they were naughty children. Now listen here! We are listening. You're just not... <coughs> oh, sorry about that, guys. You're just not giving us an answer. What is it worth to you? The brown male reiterates, and she darts her gaze back to the chief who leans in with a smile. You're an elder. You have as much a right to dictate that rate as we do. 
Give us your estimate. Silence takes over the room as she carefully thinks this over. Every now and then she looks to me and to Rannick, who is clearly troubled, who has a clearly troubled expression. This gives her an idea. Ten silver a day. Whoa, hold on a minute. Rithir raises his palm in protest, but the chief nods his satisfaction. Done. What? You can't be serious. That's, exor that's extortionate. The surprise equals that of the fat bitch, although I'm a bit of lost for words in this conversation. What does it matter? When Rannick, when Rannick will return with the boy in tow. Let it be let it be even 20 silver a day. You're absolutely right. Make it 20, then. She smiles nastily. Certainly she called the chief's bluff, but the male nods in agreement, completely throwing her off. So be it. That brings the total to three talents, am I right? The old male looks at her expectantly, and she nods reluctantly. Perfect. He pats the table. Should the human vanish in a poof of smoke, that's exactly what I'll expect my son to repay. Seems a fair price for his mistake of bringing him in the first place, wouldn't you agree? I might not know what games you two are playing, but know this. No matter of trickery is going to save you face at the howl. Pudgy female sneers, only to draw an indignant different shrug from him. Maybe, but I really don't have time for this. Thank you for the honor of your visit. But now be so kind. And get the hell out of my home! The chief nods towards the door, but she protests. I want to be present for the handling of the treasury. That is none of your concern. The chief can dispense with it at his leisure. I want to know how much. You'll be able to find that out at a later point. With your cuts are off. I assume you're able to deduce how much is missing. His taunts don't sit well with her, and she begins to simmer. But before she can explode, the chief stands up and speaks with a slightly risen tone. You have tested the limits of my patience, and I'm afraid we are at a breaking point. I won't repeat myself. Leave my home, or I'll have Vithyr summon guards and drag you through the courtyard like the trespasser you are. I can see her clenching her fist in anger as she struggles to stifle a growl, but eventually she turns around and storms off at a brisk pace. And when she, at a brisk pace is when she came in. When she's gone, the chief sighs and sits down, looking towards the brown male. I wasn't joking about the guards, by the way. Oh, I know. Vithyr nods. I want two wolves standing at the, enti ent the entry night and day, controlling the ingress and egress of people. No matter who comes, they're to report to Trist, and Trist is to check back with me. Unless it's either of those two. He growls softly under his breath. As far as they're concerned, I might be dead. I don't want him. I don't want them here uninvited. Understandable. Anyway, where were we? Ah, uh, yes, the letter. The chief bops it in towards, in turn towards Rannick, who approaches and takes hold of it. Approaches and takes hold of it. I'm not sure how much my name is worth in Strandbard nowadays, but I hope that should that should a need arise, it'll be of some use to you. I'll try not to diminish it, Father. All right, guys, I'm gonna pause it right here. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. A super thanks or a tip if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.